When we hear the term rates, we might think of heart rates or how fast our hearts are beating. In chemistry, we also have reaction rates that describe how fast a reaction forms product. Why do some reactions happen faster when more starting materials are added, why some don't? To answer this question, we must understand the concept of rate laws. The most simple rate law case is a zero-order reaction. Let's take a look at an example where A, as a starting material, reacts with itself to form B. The rate law for the zero-order reaction can be expressed as rate equals k, where k is the rate constant. In this case, we can see that the rate only depends on the constant k and does not vary with increasing or decreasing the amount of A added. Let's take a look at this situation. When we have a flask containing one mole of starting material A represented by the dancer in black, compound A reacts at a set speed and it takes 10 seconds to form product B, as represented by the dancers now in white. Using the same size of flask, let's start with 3 moles of A. Product B is still formed at the same rate, since the reaction rate is independent of the amount or concentration of reactant A. The reaction is zero order. Besides zero order reactions, we also have first order reactions. Let's look at a reaction where we have C and D mixing to produce E. The rate law for the first order reaction can be expressed as rate equals k times concentration of C or rate equals k times concentration of D. Again, k is a constant. The rate law tells us that the reaction rate varies with the increasing or increasing of one of the concentrations, either C or D, but not both. Let's take a look at the molecular level to figure out why this is. Here we have one mole of starting material C, represented with dancers in green, and one mole of starting material D, represented with dancers in blue. Compound C and compound D react with each other to form product E, represented by the pair dancers in a lift. This reaction took 18 seconds. Now let's look at what happens when we double the amount of C, still represented with dancers in green, while keeping the amount of D unchanged. Product E, represented by the pair dancer in a lift, are now being formed at a rate twice as fast as before. Remember, the rate of the reaction depended on the concentration or the amount of C only. When we double the amount of compound C, we double the rate. Let's see what happens when we double the amount of D while only having one mole of compound C. In this case, the dancers in blue that represent starting material D are waiting around for compound C. The speed at which the product E is made is not any faster than when we started with only one mole of compound C and D. The reaction rate is the same. Product E is still formed in 18 seconds. The rate of the reaction only depended on the concentration of C. When we doubled the amount of compound D, it did not affect the rate. Now let's look at the second order reaction. If the reaction is second order, the rate law can be written as Rate equals K times concentration of F times concentration of G. The rate law tells us that the reaction rate varies with decreasing or increasing of both of the reactant concentrations. Let's look at the example of the second order reaction, when we have one mole of F represented with dancers in red, reacting with one mole of G represented with dancers in purple. The reaction took 18 seconds to form one more product H, represented by the paired dancers in a lift. Now we start the reaction with two moles of F while having one mole of G. The starting materials F and G react with each other faster due to the initial amount of F. The reaction took 9 seconds, which is two times faster than the original reaction that had equal amounts of the starting materials. The reaction rate depends on the concentration of F. This time we start with 1 moles of F and double the concentration of the starting material G. The reaction also took 9 seconds to form product H, which is 2 times faster than the reaction with 1 mole of F and G. We can see from the last example and this example that adding concentration of either F or G increases the reaction rate. The reaction is said to be second order and the rate law is rate equals K times concentration of F times concentration of G. Zero-order reactions are independent of reactant concentrations, and the rate law is rate equals K. First-order reactions depend on only one of the reactant concentrations, and the rate law is rate equals K times concentration of A. 
Second order reactions are dependent on two of the reactant concentrations, and the rate law is rate equals K times concentration of A times concentration of B.